Good evening. My name is Dr. Lawrence Colburn. Some of you may remember me from my work on the six stages of moral reasoning. In this short film, we will examine the various stages by interviewing three groups and interpreting their responses. You're walking at the school carnival with your friends and you spend all your money and use all of your tickets. Your friends want you to play more games with them, but you can't. While you're walking around, you see a stranger drop a $100 bill on the ground. You look around and no one is watching. What would you do? I would pick it up and give it to the people like at the front of the beer tram. But wouldn't you want to play any games? No, because it would be stupid. I could get arrested. I see. Would anybody here do anything differently? I would. Probably Caleb. <coughs> I, would, <laughs> I would pick it up and try to find the guy to give it back to him, and if I couldn't find it, then I'd take the front desk. But Colton, would, what would you do? Uh, I would. I would. Go with Jack to be try and find the people with the money? Why? What if he was a child molester? Now why would you do that? <laughs> why would you try to find the people who give the money back? <laughs> what would you do? I would just spend it as fast as I can, so then I wouldn't get in trouble. What would you do? Uh, I would probably go with us home. You would return it? You would feel bad? Who here thinks they'd feel bad if they spent the money? Raise your hand. Well, wasn't that interesting. The younger children in stage one respond with consequences or punishment as the driving force. Whereas the older children in stage two respond with self-interest as the focus rather than punishment. You're shopping at the mall with a group of friends and you want to visit a friend who recently got hired at one of your favorite stores. While you're there, you see one of your friends take a necklace from the display and place it in her pocket. She doesn't pay for the necklace. The next day, your friend who works at the store tells you she was fired because the necklace was stolen and the store manager blames her. What would you do and why? I would... Probably ask my other friend for the necklace and I would keep the blanket in the trash. I see. What would you do? I would ask my friend for the necklace and like be like, yeah, that's not okay and give it back and I blame it on her. Now the one the phone. why would both of you try to get the necklace back from your friend? So I can return it because I knew if she stole it, she wouldn't want to return it. Just so like I can feel my conscience be better and like I know that I'm doing the right thing. The teens and preteens in this interview show a combination of responses, but the focus is on having good motives for what they would do. Let's see how the adults will respond to the famous question called the Heinz Dilemma. If Heinz steals the drugs, do you think he should be punished? I'd say the doctor that has a drug that wouldn't give it to him should be funny. Speed on that drug to save his life? I don't know if anybody would punish him. Yeah, that's a tough call. Um, stealing drug to save somebody, it's an important, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to do, but it's, it's tough to uh, steal from her. So, should he be punished? Uh, I think probably Hines may be punished inside. That may be punishment or not for doing the act. Does Heinz have a duty or an obligation to steal the drug? Why or why not? Yes, if he loves his wife, and no, if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Any yeah. other thoughts? It is helpful to observe these types of interviews to understand human nature and how we all respond on a moral level. From an educational standpoint, 
Teachers can model and instruct to help students to move to higher levels of moral reasoning. I hope this film has been helpful and informative. Thank you for watching. Yeah.